And now, a message from Australia's casino industry. Now, you may have heard this week that an inquiry found the Star Entertainment Group unfit to hold its Sydney casino licence. And I just want to assure you that this is not indicative of some wider cultural issue within the casino industry. But, uh, just to be clear, this inquiry is not to be confused with the inquiry into Crown Casino Operations in Sydney, not to be confused with the Royal Commission into Crown Casino Operations in Perth, not to be confused with the Royal Commission into Crown Casino Operations in Melbourne, not to be confused with the current inquiry into Stars Casino Operations in Queensland, not to be confused with the upcoming inquiry into Casino Operations in Adelaide. So as I say, this is really just more of a one-off. That said, the New South Wales Inquiry heard disturbing allegations of money laundering, organised crime links and fraud at Star Casino. Some would say it is a stain on our already very stained, pro-heart levels of stain industry. Oh, Mr. Heart, what a mess! But sadly, news outlets, like the one you're watching now, have been extremely biased in their reporting of this story. You hardly ever hear about how well we treat our regular gamblers. Crown even gave one of them free tickets to a Phil Collins concert. He ended up losing $30,000 after visiting the casino to collect the free tickets. But still, Phil Collins. And you constantly hear how we've turned a blind eye, but you never hear about how we've lent a helping hand. Like after one gambler was banned from Sydney Star Casino by police order, Star's Gold Coast Casino gave him free jet flights to the Gold Coast, limousines and a $52,000 Rolex. Now oh, this is the bit where I'm supposed to say gamble responsibly. Now, you may have also seen the CCTV footage from Star Casino of cash being stuffed into brown paper bags. But again, this is a misleading representation of what went on at the casino. They don't just go around stuffing money in brown paper bags. They also stuff it in suitcases, cooler bags and backpacks. Now, I know what you're thinking. What about sports bags? Well, yes, they also do those on a balcony. But whatever you think of casinos, you can't deny they're a great revenue earner for state governments. For example, Crown underpaid tax on its poker machine winnings to the Victorian government by making illegal deductions, potentially shortchanging the state by up to $272 million. I'm sorry, that was not the quote I was after. But I don't want you to worry that a casino being labelled unfit to hold a gaming licence means that it somehow can't continue to operate. That would be insane. For instance, Crown was labelled unfit to operate casinos in Perth, Melbourne and Sydney. And they're all still open, with the Sydney casino recently being granted a conditional licence. Now I know some people might not like the idea of a casino being granted a conditional licence, but this is just standard practice. It's like how when you're found guilty of drink driving, the judge grants you a conditional driver's licence. You know how that happens, a conditional driver's licence? It's just like that. Australian casinos, we're open for business. Read into that what you will. <laughs>